Okay, last section, we did all that factoring review. Now we're gonna put it to good use. Welcome to 4.2 where we're gonna solve quadratic formulas. All right, in this section, we're gonna be solving quadratics and we're gonna be using factoring to do it. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to solve these quadratic formulas. And it's one of the reasons why factoring is so important. So here we go. Uh, your steps that we're gonna do, we're gonna move all the terms to one side so that the equation equals zero. So this only works if you have a bunch of stuff equals zero. So then we're gonna factor, set each factor equal to zero and solve for the x value. And then you have your answers. So again, move all terms to one side, make them equal zero, factor, set that equal to zero and then solve and there's your answers. So let's try out our first example. So when we look at number one, the first step of factoring always is factor out the greatest common factor. So in this case, we have an X and we have an X. So right off the bat, that's the first thing I look for, we can pull out an X. So this is just our normal factoring. So our step two, well, I guess step one is move it all, all the terms so it equals zero. So we already had that. Uh, step two is factor, we did that. Set each factor equal to zero. So that means we've got x equals zero. And then on this side, I'm gonna do x plus nine equals zero. Now we solve. Here, x equals zero. Or we set, we set it equal to zero. We set the two sides equal to zero and then solve. Okay, so x equals zero, already solved that one. We're gonna subtract nine from both sides of the equation. We have x equals negative nine, and that is our solution. So if we're gonna write it as a solution set, we're gonna have x equals our curly brackets, zero, and negative nine. Remember those curly brackets signify a list of numbers or a set of numbers as opposed to interval notation, which is the parentheses and the brackets. So, okay, let's try our next one. So I'm just gonna go down the left side of the page. We can do the right side either on your own or you can ask about it in class. Um, but here I am looking at three. So when I look at this, okay, how do I factor? Well, I see a squared and a subtraction sign. So that triggers my brain to think about difference of squares. So then we look at this number, is this a perfect square? If you don't know this off the top of your head, start on your calculator, do two times two equals four. So that's our first and one of our most common difference of squares. So here we have a situation of difference of squares. So we're gonna use that formula for it. And that just means we're going to have x minus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, we set this equal to 0, x minus 2 equals 0. We set this equal to 0, x plus 2 equals 0. And then we solve, we have x equals 2, x equals negative 2. And hopefully by now you kind of see why we're doing this, because if this whole thing equals zero, which it does according to this problem, then that situation happens under two situations. One, when this factor equals zero, because it would be zero times this thing, it doesn't matter what this thing is, but because if this is zero, then this is all gonna be zero. Or when this one is equal to zero, because uh, again, zero times this would still equal zero. So that's where, that's kind of the theory or the concept where this comes from. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then once we get here, we can be super cool and awesome and say X equals the set of negative two and two. Done. Moving right along, we are on number five. Uh, so now we've got the three trinomial situation. So this is where we're gonna look at the multiples of this number and figure out if, hello, if any of them add up together to give us a negative 10. Uh, both numbers are gonna be negative. Uh, I'm sorry, both numbers are gonna be negative because of this sign. They're gonna be the same and they're gonna be negative because of this sign. Okay, let's get started. 
Uh, if you don't know the multiples of 21 off the top of your head, take your calculator. 21 divided by 2. Not going to work. 21 divided by 3. So you're going to have 21, 3 times 7. Add those together. We get 10. Bam. We're in money or, or we're in business. So if we make both of them negative, then we'll get a negative 10. So when we factor this, we've got x uh, minus 3, x minus 7 equals 0. So then we just set both, uh, both of these factors equal to 0 and solve. So we got x minus 3. So we've got x minus 3 equals 0. We solve that. x equals 3. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have x minus 7 equals 0. Solve that. We have x equals 7. So then our solution is x equals the set of 3, 7. Now, remember what this means. This means we've got a parabola, and it crosses the x-axis at 3 and 7. So number 7, this is one of those times where we've got the trinomial uh, with the factor in the front. So this guy right here. So remember our process for that, we're going to wrap that number up into there. So then that means our new problem is going to be x squared minus 13x minus 90, because 3 times 30 is 90, equals 0. So now we're just going to factor that. Uh, so we're going to look at negative 90. So we're going to have a positive and a negative and they need to add together to give us negative 13. So I have no idea what that is. So we're going to do 90 divided by 2. So 2 times 45. Uh, not anywhere close. So 90 divided by 3. 30. So that's going to be like 27 or something. 90 divided by 4 is not a whole number. 90 divided by 5 is 18. That's promising. Uh, 18 minus 5 is 13. Hey, look at that. So it needs to be a negative 13. So we're going to make a negative 18 with a positive 5. When we add those together, we're going to get a negative 13. So when we factor this, we got x, what is it, plus 5 x minus 18 equals 0. And again, we're going to set this equal to 0. x plus 5 equals 0. x. A uh, little bit of a correction here. I forgot to, we put the 3 in here. I forgot to take it out. So I got to redo this problem. So to finish it up, we have that 3 in there. We got to divide by 3 to both sides. Uh, so then 5 does not divide by 3 evenly, so that 3 is going to go up there. So we're going to have 3x plus 5. Uh, 18 does divide by 3. So then we've got x minus 6 equals 0. And then from here, we just solve it the same way. So we're going to set the left equals 0. we got 3x plus 5 equals 0. Uh, minus 5 to both sides. We got 3x equals negative 5. Divide both sides by 3. We have x equals negative 5 divided by 3. Uh, then we're to do this guy over here. Uh, what is that? x minus 6 equals 0. x equals 6. So the answer is x equals the set of negative 5 over 3 and 6. Leave it as a fraction. Don't do any weird stuff with it. Just, it's fine. Hopefully by now you're getting kind of used to this. Uh, so we're going to do the same process. This, this function does not equal 0 yet. So we're just going to do some algebra. We're going to rewrite it. Minus 5x equals 0. So I just subtract 5x from both sides. Uh, so here we've got an x in common. So we're going to factor that x out. First thing you always look for. And then from that, we're just going to set both sides equal to 0. So we've got x equals 0. Okay, that side's done. Uh, then we've got 2x minus 5 equals 0. 
We're going to add the 5 to both sides. And we're going to have x equals 5 over 2. So our solution is x equals the set of 0 and 5 over 2. Done. So here we go. These are starting to get interesting a little bit. Uh, so now we've got squares and stuff all over the place. So again, our step one was just move everything to one side, combine like terms, and then we'll deal with the problem then. So we're going to move everything to the left. So we're going to minus both sides by an x squared, and we're going to add 1 to both sides. So then we're going to have x squared minus uh, 49 equals 0. Okay, so now that's something we can factor, and that's something that looks a little bit more familiar. Uh, hopefully, you see a squared and a minus sign and nothing else. So, you, so my brain goes, is this a difference of squares? 49 is 7 squared. So yes, it is. So we're just going to factor that using that pattern. X minus 7. So here we go, uh, left side equals zero, x plus seven equals zero, x equals negative seven, right side equals zero, x minus seven equals zero, x equals seven. So our answer is x equals the set, negative seven, seven. How exciting. Oh no, the 80 is on the wrong side of the equation. It's okay. We can take care of that. So we're just going to subtract 80 from both sides. Hope you like my acting. Then we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 80 equals 0. Okay, well, let's see if we can factor that. Uh, it's a trinomial thingy mabobber. It's a negative sign right there, which means I'm going to have a positive and negative. They're going to combine together to give us a negative 2. So I'm looking for factors of 80. Um, I know that the, the smaller numbers aren't going to work because 80 is a big number, and we're trying to get a smaller number here. So I'm going to go straight to like 5. 80 divided by 5. 5 times 16, that's not yet close. I don't know. 6 is not a good number. 80 divided by 8 is 10 8 times 10 if we make our 10 negative our 8 positive when we add those together we're gonna get negative 2 so we are in business so we're gonna have x plus 8 x minus 10 equals 0 left side equals 0 x equals negative 8, right side equals 0, x equals 10, x equals the set of negative 8 in 10. How exciting. Okay, this is starting to get fun. So we're going to subtract x squared from both sides. We're going to add x to both sides. That was an awesome looking x. So now we're going to have x squared minus 8x minus 65 equals 0. Here we go. It's a trinomial. So 65 divided by 5, I'm guessing uh, it needs to be 8. So 5 times 13. If we do a negative 13 and a positive 5, that will give us negative 8. Lucky first guess. I'll take it. I just saw the 5, and I just like, oh, okay, let's start with 5. Uh, anyway, so we've got x plus 5, x minus 13, both equal 0. Left side equals 0, x equals negative 5. Right side equals 0, x equals 13, x equals the set of negative 5 and 13. Too easy. Okay, I haven't really let you try this yet. So um, here we are, 17. 
you try this out right now and let's see what you get. Okay, so when I work it out, uh, step one, we gotta bring everything over to the left. So we got two x squared minus x minus 21. I'm hoping by now you can start to see those different algebraic moves that I'm doing because I am starting to skip steps. Hopefully you're comfortable enough with algebra that we can do that. Uh, let's see here. So now we can take this two, wrap it up into the 21. Really hope I don't forget this time. We'll have x squared minus x minus 42 equals zero. So if we do 42, uh, we're going to need a positive and a negative to get to negative 1. So I don't know. 42 divided by 6 is 7. Look at that. So if we do a negative 7 and a positive 6, we add those together, we will get negative 1. So we've got x plus 6, x minus 7 equals zero. So we did this whole little two thing over here. So we got to pull that out. We're going to divide both of our second numbers by two. The six divides evenly. So we have x plus three. The seven does not. So we're going to wrap that two into that x. Two x minus seven. And we're good to go. Solve the left side. X equals negative three. Solve the right side. Slightly more complicated. I'm going to skip a step and go straight to there. When we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 7 divided by 2. So our answer is x equals the subset, or the set, sorry, negative 3, 7 over 2. Done. Okay, so as kind of a recap so far, we've done a lot with quadratics. Um, so we've got our... Uh, this is just kind of an interesting exercise to compare all the different strategies that we've used so far uh, when it comes to like graphing and or solving, things like that. So here we've got our standard form. This is a lot of times what you will find them in. It's all nice and pretty and looks great and tells us nothing. So we can then turn it into vertex form. Remember, this is where we're going to use completing the square. So we've got f of x equals x squared minus 8x. We're going to group those together. Put the plus 15 on the outside. So we, we group the first two together. We put the 15 on the outside. Uh, we're going to add and subtract a convenient number. And that number is half of negative 8, which is negative 4. We're going to square that, which equals... Uh, 16. So then we're going to add 16 right here and then subtract 16 over here. Uh, so then we're going to have, whenever you just put an equal sign, it just kind of assumes that the other side is the same. We're going to have x squared. No, just kidding. So we're going to have x minus 4 quantity squared minus 1. So we factored the inside, and it's going to be x minus 4 times x minus 4, and we combine those two terms. That's going to give us the negative 1. So now we're in vertex form. From there, we can at least glean some information. We've got our vertex at 4, negative 1, which is super helpful to graph. Uh, and then we've got our axis, our axis of symmetry is at four. So then we can come over here and again, the same problem, but we're just going to use factoring to help solve it. Uh, so remember our first one, I'm just going to rewrite it. And yes, you can hear my clock in the background. Uh, so when we factor that, it's a trinomial, 15, um, 
3 times 5, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going to add up to give negative 8. So we're going to have x minus 3, x minus 5 equals 0. And then if we were to solve that, our roots or our solution is going to be x is the set of 3 and 5. And so then from there, we can graph all of that. So we've got our vertex, which is at 4, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we've got our axis of symmetry. And then we've got our, our roots, wherever it crosses the x-axis, at 3 and 5. And then we could do an xy chart to get a few more values if we wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to draw this in. Oh, I missed. It at least has to go through that point that I found. So there you go. That's kind of how all of these things are connected and work either with or, or work with each other talking about the same thing. Okay, I skipped down to the bottom one on that page um, just because this one is already in vertex form, and so I kind of wanted to play that game a little bit. So if it's already in vertex form, we need to put it in standard form, and that we're just going to distribute everything out, square it, so on and so forth, and then combine like terms. We're just doing normal algebra. So if I were to, I'm going to rewrite this, Except I'm going to put, I'm going to write out the squares because it'll make a little bit more sense when we start solving it. So x minus 7 squared, that just means another x minus 7 plus 1. Notice I have my negative sign out there. I did this in one take and I forgot that negative sign. Don't do that. Uh, so anyway, from here we're going to FOIL first, second one. Was it foil first, outer, inner, last? I don't know, something. Uh, anyway, we are going to keep our negative sign on the outside and keep our parentheses. And we're going to have x squared. x, x times 7 is negative 7. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. They're both negative 7x's. Negative 7 negative seven times negative 7 is a positive 49 close parentheses, and then our one is just hanging out outside. So now we can distribute that negative sign, and we'll combine like terms. So we've got a negative x squared plus, so when we combine, it's going to be a negative 14, times a negative, plus 14x minus 49, because we distributed a negative, plus 1. So then our final answer f of x equals negative x squared plus 14x minus 48. So there's our standard form. So as we move over, we can look at our vertex here. And that's going to be 7, negative 1, based on our vertex pattern. And then over here, this is going to be our factored form. So I'm going to rewrite the trinomial or from standard form because it's hard you can't factor from vertex form you have to factor from standard form and that's not like a rule that's just like practicality how do you factor this so anyway i rewrote our standard form on there uh so then we're going to factor that we're going to look at 48 uh 48 divided by Two, and they're going to add up together to give 14. No, they're going to subtract together to get 14. Uh, that's not it. 48 divided by 4 is 12. Not quite. 48 divided by 6 is 8. And then... Oh, that's not right. I was doing the wrong thing. So they will have to uh, 
Oh, that's why. Okay. Sorry, we have this negative sign out here, and it's messing me up. So, I let's just factor that negative sign out so that um, I stop getting confused. So, I'm factoring that negative sign out because I don't really know how to deal with that negative sign and, and the trinomial factoring pattern. So, we're just going to pull it out. Negative signs. What are you going to do with them? Anyway, at this point, now this is a positive. They're going to add together to get the negative 14. That's where we're going to have x minus 8 and x minus, no, yes, and x minus 6 equals 0. So then from there, we solve for, we set that equal to 0, x is going to equal 8, and over here, x equals 6. At this point, I'm avoiding the negative sign here because it doesn't matter at this point because you throw a negative sign out front, times 0, still going to equal 0. So that's how I can get away with not dealing with it there. Anyway, so we have a vertex, and we have some x coordinates. Ooh, sorry x equals the sum of 6 and 8. Anyway, we've got a vertex at 7, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1. And then it crosses the x-axis at 8 and 6. So then we can... Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through my mistake. So we were about to graph here. And my brain stopped for a minute, and I was like, wait a minute, that can't be right, because I know from our um, properties of parabolas that there's a negative sign here, so that means that parabola needs to be going down. So that's why I kind of stopped and hesitated, and I was like, okay, I must have made a mistake. So turns out I did. We're going to erase that. So uh, our factoring was fine. That all made sense, but I got my vertex wrong. That should be a positive one, not a negative one. I accidentally got these two messed up because this changes signs, this one does not. So, shame on me. Uh, so that should be a positive one. So with that, we've got a vertex at seven, positive one, and then our X's are still the same, 1 at 8, 1 at 6, and there we now have a graph that looks like how it should. That's one of the reasons why it's really good to know the properties, and that's kind of why we went over the translations, reflections, and all that good stuff, so that when you get down to here and you graph it, and you're about to graph the wrong thing, you can recognize, wait a minute, I made a mistake. So uh, that was a good exercise on why that stuff matters. But here's your answer. Sorry I made this mistake. Move on. Uh, anyway, we'll go over some of this stuff in class. What I really want you to focus on is the factoring. So try this factoring out, uh, and we'll do lots more factoring in class. So good luck. I'll see you there. And don't forget to factor. And don't drop your negative sign.